Home of the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco is a great place for business, family, sports, entertainment, and much more. But not everything about San Francisco is great. Here are the real pros and cons of living in San Francisco coming from a Bay Area native. So there was a time that even San Francisco rent was greater than New York. But now we get some of the worst media representation ever. Let's go over the truth together. Let's talk about pro number one, extremely diverse. When talking about diversity, the first thing that comes to mind is culture, the people. Many people say that San Francisco's Chinatown is one of the best in the country with its dim sum places, herbal shops, souvenir, and ornate temples. The city's progressive politics and diversity makes it a melting pot of ideas and cultures all throughout the world. Another diverse aspect of San Francisco is its art. You have great indoor places like the Exploratorium, SF MoMA, and the California Academy of Sciences, which rotates your collections consistently. You also have its lively outdoor murals. Take a look at what's been going on in the Mission District in San Francisco. It's like a virtual art gallery. In the neighborhood, vivid artwork ranges from social political messages to cultural heritage, displayed on hundreds of buildings all across. For a close-up look, wander over to these spots and enjoy the surrounding eateries and sites. Now, let's talk about the first con, which is what a lot of people allude to first, which is the cost of living. San Francisco has a wide mix of housing options. There are certainly the newer options of condos in Soma, but there's also a lot more affordable single family options as well for less than $1 million in the southern parts of San Jose. Now, the cost of living in San Francisco is 72% higher than the national average. The current medium sale price of all home types in San Francisco is about $1.36 million, which is 216% higher than the national average, $431,000. Now, as you can imagine, during the pandemic, many workers have fled San Francisco to live in lower cost areas whether it's Austin, Seattle, or in Florida. Now that the pandemic is over, people have been moving back to either San Francisco or the surrounding areas as remote work is significantly less than before. A slight note though, home prices and rent is actually much cheaper than it was before. So it's arguably now that it's more affordable than it was five years ago. But think about this, why is housing and rent more expensive here? It's never reported that often because at the end of the day, these landlords still have to make money, but it's because the incomes of the people that are here is so much higher than all these other places around on the country, especially around the world. The next pro, career-driven area with one of some of the best universities in the country. San Francisco is a center for creativity and innovation, being home to a booming tech industry. Just take a look at all the activity in AI. Some of the world's largest companies like Uber, Google, Salesforce have either headquarters here or huge presences in this area or at least the surrounding areas. Now, while commercial real estate demand fell off a cliff, a lot of things have been changing. It has increased by 10% in the last year in terms of demand, and a large proportion of this is because of the current surge of AI. Take a look at this. In Mission District, San Francisco is home to OpenAI's headquarters. The developers, which you may have known of, ChatGPT, and they have recently just taken over a huge sublease from Uber at the end of 2023. If you're looking to work in tech, there are no shortage of, of opportunities in this city and neighboring areas has a huge biotech cluster. The prominent universities in the San Francisco area is also another great reason to live here as it continues to funnel in some of the best talent that you can have, whether it's Stanford, UC Berkeley, UCSF, Santa Clara University. These are just some of the few major colleges near San Francisco. These prestigious colleges offer a blend of academic rigor and cultural richness to the environment, making it a great place to live and mingle with others. The Golden City has the second highest percentage of citizens with a college degree. Now let's talk about the con. When you have this many people in, there is congestion. From the Bay Area as a macro, drivers spend about 97 hours a year in traffic. Now, the amount of traffic in San Francisco is completely different than the other traffic throughout the Bay Area. Because most is just like local streets trying to get out of the city and onto the highway. But once you're actually on the highway out of the city, it's not nearly as bad. Now, because of this, the solution is that most people will go with public transit instead, whether it's buses, there's the Caltrain, or they may take the BART station. If that doesn't work, you can always just use Uber and Lyft because most people in San Francisco will find it more convenient to just Uber around than to actually get a car, pay for parking, and pay for insurance. Number three, the pro, nature. I just got back from my trip in India and San Francisco has so much to offer for nature lovers, such as beaches, large parks, and hikes with incredible views. What makes this area so special is its duality. You live in a cosmopolitan city while having nature literally just 10 minutes away. A few of the most popular trails include Lands End Trail, which offers incredible views of the Golden Gate Bridge and the Pacific Ocean, 
You also have Golden Gate Park. This is an incredibly underrated area. Fantastic for biking, walking, and enjoying all the beautiful smaller gardens in this area. We haven't even discussed any of the incredible trails or parks outside of the Bay Area, whether you're going more north to Marin County or any of the counties surrounding. There are no shortage of fantastic public parks for you to go. Now let's talk about number three, the weather. While the Bay Area in general has very good mild weather with very little pollution, San Francisco has its own microclimates. It is typically consistent, but in this case, it's usually a lot cooler. It's foggy in many parts and it's rarely that hot. Now the benefit is that it has very low humidity so it's one of my favorite and one of the best walkable cities that you will find in the country. Now, while the fog in San Francisco is common, it does make up for some astonishing high up views, but be sure always prepare to bring thick jackets as if you're gonna go to Lake Tahoe to go skiing. This being said, San Francisco is very unique. If you want something just warmer, you can just go across the bridge to the Oakland side or down south to San Mateo County, and it's always gonna be pleasant and much warmer. I wanna talk about the misconception about the geography here. There's a lot of concerns about earthquakes in San Francisco, but they're very infrequent. They're not like Florida where you have hurricanes virtually every year. I just met with a client that has lived in the Bay for only four years, and while he was super concerned with earthquakes here, when there was like a 3.6 magnitude one, it felt actually less than a cargo train that's coming by your home would actually shake up your home more than majority of the earthquakes that occur. Pro number four, sports. San Francisco has a thriving sports scene. It's a great place to be a sports fan as you'll find several events all year round and plenty of team pride. It is known mostly for basketball and baseball. San Francisco Giants play at Oracle Park. They've won eight World Series titles. The Golden State Warriors are seven time NBA champions and they play at the Chase Center by Mission Bay. The 49ers used to be in San Francisco, but they are now moved to Santa Clara, which isn't that far away. And if you like hockey, San Jose Sharks have been here for a long time. Still not in the city, but closer to Santa Clara. Now let's talk about con number four, which is homelessness. According to the National Alliance to End Homelessness, the most recent stats state that the amount of homeless people on a random given night in 2022 was over 7,700 people. Now the percentage of homeless people per 10,000 in the general population of San Francisco was about 95.1. The government did try to mask some of these ongoing homeless problems by implementing some anti-homelessness architecture and strict law enforcement around certain parts of the city, but that's really only in certain areas and you're gonna see big clusters of those that are unhoused. Take a look at some of these anti-homelessness architecture to get an idea of what they try to do, but this is a problem that has been getting worse. I'm not sure exactly how this will get better, but that is something you need to be very mindful of, of the regions that you decide to be at. To be fair though, the city of San Francisco has over 900,000 people. So it's not everywhere, but specific areas are doing far worse than others. Number five is the nightlife scene. Now the nightlife isn't like anything like New York, but it is some of the best throughout the rest of the country. There are many exclusive clubs that are meant for socializing. These include Battery, Modernist, Wingtip, the Yacht Club, the Olympic Club, as well as many just casual bars and nightclubs that you can go to. Not only are the clubs a fantastic way to spend your evening and meet new people and similar people, but the bars and restaurants are an absolute must. There are no shortage of great eats in the area and come check out some of the most popular ones and some of my favorites, the House of Prime Ribs. The 49ers just celebrated the lock of the number one seed here recently. But pro tip, you can get seconds of your meat, so always come hungry, but you gotta be sure to make reservations far in advance. Take a look at this, I'm talking about eight plus months out. Now, not all things like these are nice places, but you can certainly go with lots of Michelin star places. Now, if you don't fancy Michelin star places or these natural places don't work for you, there are no shortage of cheap eats. Take a look at this amazing list by eaters because most of the cheap eats are gonna be sandwiches like banh mi, you have noodles, and you have a lot of Asian food that can be very inexpensive. Now, the city is beautiful and there is always something to do. You can never go hungry in this city. And to be fair, you may never end up buying any groceries. Now, I'm gonna talk about the last con, Con number five, crime rate. The high crime rates in San Francisco does pose a significant challenge for residents, impacting the overall sense of safety and well being. Now, most of the crimes are not violent crimes, but they could be pro property crimes, drug related offenses, just stealing things from supermarkets, stealing things from stores, crashing into car, car windows, stealing small items like backpacks or whatever they may have. In general, it's a terrible thing. One of the richest people in the world, Elon Musk, did tweet that violent crime in San Francisco is horrific. 
Now, this can be scary to read, but often the media exaggerates on topics like this, but it's not false. Now, some slight news, despite the higher crime rates that we have seen over the last several years, in 2023, most types of crime has decreased slightly and 2024 is shipping it up to be better. My guess though, maybe it's because of the election season, but we'll see. Now we covered a lot in this video, including the cons, which were the cost of living, traffic, maybe a little bit more mild weather than you're used to. It doesn't snow at least, homelessness and crime rate, but also so many pros like diversity, the culture, job opportunities, nature, sports, vibrant nightlife. While the media will always make things dramatic, it's not entirely off. Then again, when you have 900,000 people in one city alone, there's always gonna be bad parts of news. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in the Bay Area market, my team covers the entire Bay Area, and we would love to be your trusted real estate resource. Our information is down below. Let's talk.